feeling a little edgy today in this conversation and uh, there's a part of me that always worries when I feel so activated and so sure of what I want to communicate that it's going to come across as like too aggressive, too much. It's not going to be received in a way that you can hear it because you're going to feel that it's just a little intense. But here's what I'm going to trust today, that there are parts of you that are like craving that intensity, that are craving that disruption in your usual programming within. There are parts of you that will appreciate my abruptness and my straight to the pointness today. So let's dive into this conversation. I want to get you to sit and consider how much of yourself you bring to the programs, the courses, the offering, the coaching that you invest in. What I witness in so many women is that I think they've allowed themselves to believe that just investing, like literally investing the finances uh, that it takes to be part of a group experience or a program or whatever it is, is enough, is helping themselves by overcoming that first initial barrier of, ooh, should I use my resources to invest in myself in this way, um, is enough. Once they've overcome that barrier and they have found ways, if possible, to invest in themselves, they think, yep, okay, I've done it. Job well done. But that's just the beginning. You know, our proximity to something is powerful. By investing in a course or a program and, you know, opening ourselves up to receiving whatever is there for us in terms of just content or experience or whatever is shared for us to be exposed to, has power, has value. But what I want to kind of make very clear to you today is that it is absolutely imperative that you break the habit of sitting on the sidelines. There is a subtle sabotage that goes on when you, you know, put your hand up to be included within something. But then as you move into the experience of that, you allow yourself to just stay on the perimeter, on the outside of it. You observe, you listen, you let other people go first. And I want you to know how ready and worthy and overqualified you are to make yourself the person that just dives all the way in and squeezes it for everything that it's worth and makes the most of the opportunities that are presented to you. So often, you know, we call in these opportunities. We want more support. We want accountability. We want community. We want to be seen and heard and understand and held and supported. And then we get that opportunity and we just do nothing with it or we don't maximize it. And so I really want to encourage you in whatever it is that you're investing in, you understand that, yes, it takes a certain level of courage to show up and to be seen, but that's part of the process. If you're investing in anything that is encouraging expansion or transformation or an amplification of some part of you that at the moment is subtle or unexplored or not fully expressed yet, then it's going to require you to feel deeply uncomfortable as you witness yourself being expressed or seen or met in a new way. So I've just started a group program today. It's called Audacity. It's a 30-day activation accelerator. And of course, with most things, day one is about like coming in and introducing ourselves to the group, to the container, so we can kind of build that sense of community and we can feel into who's there with me. And it's always just so interesting to see the way myself included and other women introduce ourselves, what parts of us we decide to amplify, what story we tell of self. And what I notice and observe within myself and, and the other women that I work with is that we bring forward the parts of us that are, you know, the most polished, the most poised, the most curated, and they're not always the most accurate reflection of who we truly are, or they're simply not all that we are. And so I guess my question to you today is, how would it feel to find space, to find opportunity, whether that's with a coach or in a group program or just a community of your own, where you actually encourage yourself and then allow yourself to show up and be seen, expressing the parts of you that maybe you don't even really know yet because they've been denied, repressed, pushed into the background of the persona that you create and present to the world. How would it feel to communicate from the part of you that does feel a little confusing and gritty and uncertain and unstable? 
how might that feel? Probably terrible <laughs> initially, but what would there be to gain from that? How would it feel to let yourself verbalize the unspoken rumbling within you so that you can witness the articulation of it for yourself so that you can be met and held you know the parts of you that you think I can't share that I can't say that I can't show that to have that met and held and supported within the right space right this isn't about just declaring all of our untold stuff to the world. I'm saying get yourself in right space, right community, right place, right time, all of that. That's important. But once you're there, push yourself, push yourself to trust that it is safe to let yourself be a manifestation in motion, to evolve in real time to become new even to yourself, even in the way you communicate about yourself. Because chances are, if we take the introduction as the example, the way you introduce yourself has been practiced, has been rehearsed, has been said five million bloody times before, <laughs> right? And we know this is because we just want to be accepted, right, in community. This is just part of our makeup as human beings, right? We want, we want that acceptance straight away. But what are we not sharing? What are we hiding? And what are we kind of missing the opportunity to experience within ourselves when we do that? And so how else might you describe yourself? What other parts of you might there be to communicate? There's so much. We're such complex beings, right? We're meeting ourselves again and again and again on a daily basis. And we're so complex, such a curious kind of like entanglement of all things at once. Like I, I can speak for myself if I talk about the kind of woman I am and how I feel within my life, there's this juxtapositioning of I am so grateful and so just in love with the life that I have created for myself, particularly in the last six years. I look around and I'm in awe of everything I've been able to establish for myself. And at the same time, quite often there are parts of me that also look around and just want to burn everything to the ground and start again, <laughs> right? It's easier to communicate from this part. Hi, yes, I rebuilt my life and I love everything and I'm so in tune with the blessings and I'm so grateful. Right? Not often that I would come into a space and be like, hi, my name is Lena Moxon. Sometimes I look around my house and I legitimately think I can't handle this shit. I just want to burn it all to the ground. <laughs> right? Why not? Why not? Because we fear what that might say about us. We fear that, you know, someone might take that very literally and, you know, think that they need to do something with that information or whatever it is, right? We just fear the judgment. We fear being misunderstood. And I suppose I'm encouraging us to find spaces and places where we are allowed to speak from the part of us that is kind of gritty, that is kind of complex, that isn't positioned to just be like easily digested and well-received, to speak from the place within us that is confused and kind of messy and kind of muddy, you know, and to see what's there, to see what's beyond that, you know, to really give ourselves the opportunity to expand into all aspects of ourselves, to let all parts of us be amplified so that we might get to know them and so that we might see as well that, right, I've been telling myself that people can't handle this part of me, but here it is and I'm sharing it and the world is still spinning <laughs> and nobody's actually that concerned with my parts because they are too concerned trying to balance and know their own parts. If you have not yet come across the work of Richard Schwartz, the internal family systems. This is beautiful work that will catch you up to a lot of the language that I'm using here when we're talking about the parts within us. And I highly encourage you, you know, read his books to begin with. There's a lot of YouTube content, a lot of podcasts as well that will catch you up to understanding that there are so many parts all coexisting within us, you know, and we get used to only allowing ourselves to be seen, to be held, to be supported with certain parts visible, certain parts communicating, certain parts taking the lead within our lives. And it's really important. We're not saying those parts are wrong. 
all I'm saying is you need to find spaces and places and opportunity to encourage yourself to just almost fuck around and see what would happen if I just let this aspect of me write the intro today. How would that feel for me? What would it reveal to me? Would it feel like liberation? Would it feel like, oh, it feels so good to just acknowledge that this part exists within me? Or when I actually speak from that part, do I realize like, wow, I really don't resonate with that. That's that's something that's within me and it's something that has been, you know, put there through lived experience. But the person that I am today actually doesn't really resonate with that part of me at all. And so maybe I can find ways to release the energy of that. There's so much that can go on, right? But we never know that if we're always just presenting to the world in a certain way, using the same language to describe ourselves, all of that. So just feel into how much of the authentic self that you have created is actually an accurate representation of what is real and true for you as the person you are today. And the trick here, it's not really a trick, but the trick here is that we're constantly evolving, changing, shifting. You know, I'm not the same person I was at the beginning of this <laughs> recording. As I'm saying things, I'm like, oh, already kind of shifting and sorting through different thoughts, different feelings, different iterations of this message are already landing for me there's already things I've said that I'm like I don't like the way I said that I would say it differently next time different already right so we get to meet ourselves endlessly there's infinite potential for us to realize what we have been pretending realize what we have outgrown realize what we have kind of manufactured as self that maybe was never us or just is no longer us and infinite potential for us to just play in the energy of creation to get really curious about who else we might be able to be what other aspects of us are ready to be amplified and to just see what would happen if we lived through the energy of that all right my friends i hope something has landed in this for you today connect with me on instagram at lena underscore moxon all of my offerings, my coaching, my group programs and all the good stuff that comes to me through me as me for you is available on my website, www.lenamoxon.com.